this is in my real life thing, like nightmare come to life. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to the town of Clinton. If you're not from Clinton, thank you for joining us here. Um, my name is Kay Abdallah, and I work with the Community Economic Development Office here at Clinton Town Hall, and we are truly thrilled to welcome the uh, Worcester Youth Symphony Orchestra this afternoon um, for a wonderful concert. Um, thank you for joining us. I know it's a busy week leading into the holidays, so it's great that we're all here. Um, one important thing that you saw um, about this concert is that all proceeds are going to Wheat Community Connections, which is our local um, nonprofit that we have the director here, Judy Bridell, to give you just a quick who they are and why it's so important to our community here. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Bridell. I'm the North County Regional Director of Wheat Community Connection. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, Wheat has been serving the community in residents of Berlin, Golden, Clinton, Lancaster, and Sterling for 41 years now. We're in our 41st year. We uh, were organized in 1982, and uh, we went under the umbrella of the United Way of Tri County in 2012. And we um, continue to serve all the residents in those programs and beyond, particularly for our food um, programs. We have a incredible um, staff of eight people, a phenomenal group of about 900 volunteers, and um, folks like yourself who come on to fundraising events uh, to support us and donors to help us serve the many people that we do. Um, we have a food pantry that serves about 1,100 uh, people every month. We, um, on average, provide 5,500 lunches and dinners to people monthly. Um, last year, we closed with a little over 62,000 meals provided um, to people in the uh, areas that we serve. And uh, we help connect individuals with eligible programs and services uh, be about 50 folks um, per, per week to help with that process so that nobody's falling through the cracks we have seasonal programs as well we have packs and school supplies uh, thanksgiving is coming up we're serving tomorrow through a drive uh, drive through service 515 families and through the generosity of the Simple Man Saloon, they're on their eighth year of cookies, Thanksgiving meals, so that we can deliver them to seniors within the five towns that we serve, as well as provide walk-up services to over 200 individuals on Thanksgiving Day. So um, we're a little busy, and we appreciate your support. Um, small but mighty organization. And um, if you would like to get involved, um, certainly we have some QR codes up at the front table. You can do so and find out about volunteer opportunities. If you'd like to come down and, and go for a tour, we're located right at 272 High Street. Um, and if you'd like to kick off your month of December by having another fun family um, friendly event, you can come to our reindeer run, which is on December 2nd. It's at Breakaway Billiards, and it's a 5K run, but we enjoy walkers as well. We have plenty of those. And um, it's really a fun event. There's a lot of um, festivities, and it's a good way to kick off the holidays. I'm usually hiding behind a podium, so I didn't follow any of these things because I was afraid I'd be like this. But um, I just want to personally extend my deepest thanks once again to the Worcester Youth Orchestra, Jonathan Colby, of course, and the Adela, the Clinton Town um, Development Consultant for their commitment to helping us serve the community. Together, we can continue to create positive change and make a lasting impact on the lives of those who need us most. And I appreciate your attendance today. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is uh, John Tripoli. I serve as artistic director of the Christian Folk Orchestras, and I'm the conductor of the WI Symphony Orchestra, which is with you here today in Clinton. We'd like to extend our greatest of thanks to the Select Board here in the town of Clinton for um, uh, giving us the opportunity to play in this wonderful historic town auditorium. Municipal auditoriums like this will find all over the United States. And the one here in Clinton is a gem in that tradition of municipal auditoriums and public spaces. And we are thrilled to be here to present this program um, uh, here in Clinton today. I'd like to also thank Leah Abdella uh, and the town officers here for all her assistance behind the scenes and advocating not only for us to be here, but for all the incredible work that she does as um, economic um, development for the town of Clinton, bringing live events and festivals uh, to downtown Clinton. It's really wonderful to see so much activity happening uh, on Main Street here. I also hope that then you'll uh, look up our uh, reach community connection and all the work that they're doing, not only for the town of Clinton, but the wider Clinton community. Uh, today's performance was made possible through the generous funding of the Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts, uh, which assists uh, many local nonprofits such as ourselves. Um, in ensuring that arts, culture, and live performances happen all over the central part of uh, the state here in Worcester County. Uh, the piece we just played, the Best of My Metro by Dublin Park, hopefully you recognize the tune after its many iterations. Um, and you're wondering why this all these iterations took place. It's Dublin Park was an organist. And so, for those of you that attend church or maybe know about organ playing, organists are very adept in transposing and moving around and doing variations while they wait for some of the business to take place uh, during the church service. And Dudley Bach is a, a native of Hartford, Connecticut, one of the most preeminent organists of his time. He was solo recital numerous times at Mechanics Hall, which is home to the Worcester Youth Orchestras. It was a nice way to start off um, our concert today featuring our local composer from the late uh, 19th century. Uh, we go on now to uh, a piece uh, by an American composer, which is uh, Leonard Bernstein's uh, selections from West Side Story. And it's paired with um, its uh, uh, predecessor in terms of dramatic works, uh, and that is Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet overture, and I'll talk a bit more about that version that we're doing. As you know, Leonard Bernstein um, was uh, responsible for a whole new generation of music lovers, and his concert programs in the 60s and 70s introduced orchestral music to young people um, in that post-war generation and inspired a whole new level of appreciation for the performing arts here in the United States and also overseas and rebuilding connections between various countries um, following the Second World War. Um, but of course we know him for his dramatic and theatrical works as well. So please enjoy these selections from Leonard Bernstein's uh, West Side Story.
But I suppose you go and get musicians, electronic equipment. Um, so the, the two inner pieces we're doing today, we started off with Helen Bernstein's West Side Story, was this uh, modern day interpretation of Shakespeare's story of Romeo and Juliet. And those of you that maybe took uh, Latin or any Latin or classical literature uh, will know that uh, Romeo and Juliet was Shakespeare's take on the ancient uh, Greco Roman um, tale of Pyramus and Thisbe. And uh, once upon a time, I was a Latin student uh, at uh, Rodent High School. And one of the first poems that we had to translate uh, in AP Latin was the story of Pyramus and Thisbe. And there's this great line where it talks about um, the mulberry bush uh, getting its red berries as a result of um, uh, Romeo and uh, Pyramus and Thisbe coming to their untimely end in their tragic um, uh, love situation. And that always stuck out with me. Of course, being in a Greco Roman poem, it's very, uh, 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 very clear and uh, very dramatic uh, uh, writing as it describes this whole regression in the tale of Pyramus and Thisbe. And so, of course, when we get to uh, Shakespeare's interpretation of Romeo and Juliet, uh, which is probably the most well known musical interpretation and setting um, of, of Shakespeare's uh, play, the Tchaikovsky, rather, um, of, of that uh, Shakespeare uh, drama. And uh, Tchaikovsky, when he first uh, wrote this, was really at the suggestion of a colleague of his, and um, he ended up writing three different versions. The first two um, were not really well liked by his friend and mentor. And if you um, read some of the correspondence, they're actually quite scathing of Tchaikovsky and sort of chastising him for being unimaginative. Um, so the version that we know today, where we uh, fantasy of the um, is a result of those two extensive revisions. But in the first version that we'll play today, um, Tchaikovsky really focuses on um, uh, this opening chorale, which he then brings back in various forms throughout the work. Um, and it's, it's a slight um, variation of, of a Haydn chorale, it's a very Haydn esque um, uh, route to it. And it starts off on the low strings with the cello and bass and bassoons. Which, um, which Tchaikovsky often uses that um, in his symphonic writing. If you're familiar with the second symphony by Tchaikovsky, uh, uh, first symphony by Tchaikovsky, or with the daydreams, um, the haunting fourth movement theme is heard for the first time in the low strings and bassoons. And then Tchaikovsky does this, but he wants the audience to pay attention because it's lower and quieter, and you really have to listen quite carefully um, so you don't miss it. But this lovely haunting chorale tune. Uh, comes back rather dramatically with brass later on, and then we hear that wonderfully familiar and uh, most adored love theme um, that is well known, of course, in the third version that appears in all three. So what you'll hear today, um, as far as I know, is the first time it's been played here in Clinton, but probably in this state as well. It's um, it's not very, uh, I would say it's not very popular, but most people really like the third version. But the first version of the 1869 really does have its musical merits. And it shows a very young Tchaikovsky's writing as he's still exploring the orchestral colors and timbres. And you'll hear that in some of the woodwind writing. Um, so uh, please enjoy um, this, so I must say, I dare say this is premiere of Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet, the first version, 1869.
Have you recognised the love theme? So that, that's what started giving that first version of two and then three. But that haunting chorale that we hit very beginning and it's coming back, we had a very powerful dramatic effect on the whole work. Uh, the, the piece next to our program, our concluding work today, our final overture, um, is a relatively unknown work. And the composer is Florence Price. And I'm wondering, and why so? Can you raise your hand if you've ever heard of Florence Price before this season? And now he knows about Florence Price in my throat. <laughs> so one of the reasons, one of the things that my colleagues and I, uh, Dan Gang from the jazz program, Christy Colwell and Linda Ensemble and Jack Corbett, uh, and Philharmonic and String Orchestra. So we need to share this number of orchestra. When we look at music for the year, we, all, we want to provide our students with the introduction to the orchestral breaks, but also the composers that they may not have come across either in their um, uh, lessons or schools or uh, in sonatas or etudes. We try and provide a really big variety of orchestral styles. And Florence Price, uh, she is. Um, a, a female African American uh, composer, and she was the first um, um, African American and female composer to have a piece of hers premiered and commissioned by one of the big five orchestras in this country, and that was the Chicago Symphony, and that was in 1933. Um, and in attendance of that concert was um, George Gershwin, and if you're into politics, Adelaide Stevenson was there, and it was attended by sort of the Chicago musical intelligentsia. And they, they rallied around Florence Price to make sure that the CSO did this work. And after that, after that second symphony, that first symphony, she um, was premiered by the CSO. Um, she went on to write a, a number of other uh, orchestral works. She was an organist as well, and a pianist. Um, and many of her organ works can be found in um, uh, compendiums um, for liturgical literature in uh, AB churches across the country. Um, and then in the late 50s, uh, she became somewhat of a recluse and retired from public life. And she withdrew most of her works uh, from the public. And they sat in boxes in her summer home. Uh, and about uh, 18, 20 years ago, uh, her descendants were going through uh, items as they were winding up her estate. Um, and they came across all these works by Florence Price, which historians, musicologists, and conductors we knew about them, we knew they existed, but we just couldn't find them. And only bits and pieces were available. And so the family took it to various publishing companies and editors, and they were re engraved. Um, and so now we're able to perform and learn incredible works that she, that, uh, that she wrote during her lifetime, many of which she never actually heard performed uh, by an orchestra. Um, they were written as essays or as competition entries, but they were never performed for a public performance. Um, so today we're going to play. Um, one of her works, one of her early works, called Ethiopia's Shadow in America, is a three-part tongue poem, um, 
to her, her look into her own ancestry in life. And you will hear various themes throughout this. It's heavily influenced by Ellen Price's um, deep religious faith in um, the Andy Church and the middle section. Um, it was an ode to uh, uh, a gospel influence as well. It features a, a concert master within Ryan. It features um, uh, Michelle and Lee in a solo there. We have a number of woodwind solos as well on the oboe. Uh, Dylan Bourne on, on clarinet. Um, and so it's a wonderful orchestral uh, tone poem here. And um, it has been performed in the Boston area, but um, this is the first performance outside of Metro Boston. And so we are really happy uh, to be presenting this to you here today uh, in Clinton. And I hope that you'll uh, go on to look up more of Florence Price as they've been works and contributions to the musical field uh, in this country. And she followed in the footsteps of a Boston composer called Amy Beach. Um, who was the first woman to have a piece premiered um, by a major orchestra, and that was the BSO uh, in 1899. And so it took another 30 years um, until Florence Price came along for a major orchestra in this country to perform a symphony uh, by a female composer. Um, so Florence Price and the Beach um, separated by 30 years, but really helping in, in um, raising awareness uh, for the talent that existed in the American composition of the uh, 20th uh, century. So please enjoy today uh, Florence Price's Ethiopia's Shadow.
Thank you again for joining us this evening uh, here at Queensland Town Hall, and thank you to Maria Bella, and we hope you will continue to support the great work of REIT uh, here in Greater Clinton. And I also want to express the thanks to the Wild Board of Directors um, for their support of this program, and our staff, uh, Christine Carter, General Manager, uh, Paige Wynn, our Operations Manager, and Virginia Davidson, um, our Director of Development. And without the support today of the uh, Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts and all of our supporters, we'll be able to present fantastic programs like this, providing opportunities for our towns of students to walk across Worcester County to bring live music to downtown. Thank you very much. We wish you all a very lucky and healthy Thanksgiving. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.